All right, so for today's video, Nadine and I are gonna talk about getting started with running. Um, we work with a lot of beginner runners and there's some common things that we find it, that we give people as far as advice goes. And so I've written a bunch of them down and um, I kind of want to go through them. And um, Nadine's gotten into running a little bit more, so maybe you can comment from that perspective on just your own experience a little bit with this. I'm a fairly new runner too. I'm, I'm, I wasn't a lifetime runner, but I've definitely taken it up in the last couple of years. So the first thing uh, I want to go over is when you start running is to start with a plan if you can and, um, and to start slow. So we'll, we'll actually, I think we could probably link to this video, our little Couch to 5K program that we have, which is about a six week program that slowly gets you to build up. And um, it's super important when it comes to avoiding injury that you start slow and you just don't go out willy nilly and just run every single day as far as you can. I don't know, how did you get started, Nadine? Um, you might not have I had guess, a plan, but. No, I definitely did not have a plan. I would say I just set myself like a mileage goal, but I, I didn't, I just said I was gonna run as much of that as I could. Like if I wanted to go out and do three miles and I only ran half of it, then I just walked the rest of it. So I knew I needed to get out to do a certain number of miles, but the running aspect of it, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really plan. I just was like, okay, I wonder how far can I run? And then, you know, took a break, tried to sprinkle a little bit more running in there until I got to kind of my goal. Yeah. And I mean, obviously this is really individual based on Maybe you used to be a runner like in college and now you're just getting back into it after 10 years, you'd be able to progress a little bit quickly. But something you said there as far as running and walking, that is typically how you get started, right? Is a plan where you basically walk and run together. You just don't go, for most people, just don't go out and just start running. And so the walking is important because you're able to then be out there on your feet for a long period of time. That's basically what we try to get people to do. It's like, we wouldn't have you start running by like, just go run for five minutes and then stop. You'd much rather start by walking um, four minutes running one minute and do that for 30 minutes. That's slowly how you build up. And it's almost like you're building a running callus in a sense in that your bones, your muscles, your ligaments, your tendons, all these things sort of have to adapt to running and it takes some time to do that. And almost all injuries are because people do too much too soon. So um, that's the first thing. Start slow, have a plan. All right, the next thing is find a, or join a group or at least a friend. And you had a friend you started running with, did that help? Yeah, definitely. I mean, also just as a female, I didn't really want to be out running by myself a lot. Um, so I had, he just happened to be a guy friend, but even if it was a female friend too, I just feel safer if I'm running with somebody else. Um, so yeah, when I knew I, I decided I wanted to start running, I knew exactly who to ask because running a 5k for, for this friend is, uh, like taking a walk down to the mailbox for the rest of us. Um, so yeah, he was, he loves running and he was excited that I even wanted to go. So I was lucky to, to get to go with him. And, um, you know, he's, he was uh, able to keep me motivated. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just like anything else, right? Like having some community, having a friend that you have to show up to when you don't feel like doing it, having a little bit of a pattern there of like, Hey, I really want to get into running can two or three times a week. Can we get together in the mornings or in the evenings after work to do it? it really helps. And then a lot of the, uh, almost everywhere has a running group. A lot of times they're associated with a business, like maybe a, a brewery or a running shoe store. And you will find the most supportive people at these groups. I mean, running communities are like the best people. I don't know, at least what I find. Then they bring their dogs and they don't care if you walk, right? So that's a lot of times people are intimidated to join a group in a sport and they feel like, oh man, I'm not a runner. I can't go to a running group. It's like, yeah, you can. It's like, there's a lot of variety of people there. There are people there who are really good runners and they run off and do their thing. There's a lot of people who are, 
either recovering from an injury, just getting started like you, they'll walk half the time. It's probably the, one of the least judgmental groups I've ever been around. But having that support, and if, they, if you know they run, like our local running group at a shoe store, they run Monday and Wednesday nights, and you know they're always there, that really helps to get started. Or at least find a friend. Um, okay, the other thing that really makes running or starting to run fun is to be able to track your progress. And there are a ton of different ways to do this, but the most easy way is to get some sort of watch or a wearable. So Nadine, you got a watch, did that, did that help you? Well, I had a Fitbit and I had that for years and I really loved it, but then I, once I started running, nobody else wore Fitbits to track their runs. Everybody wore garments. So I was like, well, if I want to be a real runner, yeah, I guess cool. I have to buy a Garmin. So I got the cheapest Garmin I could find that wasn't the kids version <laughs> on Amazon. And now I wear that all the time. But I know people love their, their Apple watches to track as well. And they're fine too. Yeah. But yeah, the, um, yeah, and that's the thing. Like there's a, you can, you can buy really expensive Garmin's, but the cheapest one will track your running very well and give you all the information you need. But that's really encouraging a lot of times to um, be able to see your progress. You'll be able to see that you've gone a little bit faster, or a little bit further, and um, makes a huge difference. And then if you get more into running, you'll be able to, there's a lot of data there that you can use. Um, that's probably another video to go over that. But yeah, get something, get, get a cheap Garmin. Um, I think that you can even use your phone if you run with your phone, right? If you put it in your pocket or held it in your hand, that would be if you already have like an iPhone or an Android, a smartphone, then they would be able to do that. But Garmin's can be pretty cheap and it's just nice to have one when you're ready to go hit some buttons and start tracking it. Um, next thing I want to talk about is footwear. And so, um, what you don't want to do if you start running is just dig around in your closet for like the pair of shoes that looks like they're sort of a running shoe that you're not sure when you bought them, when you last wore them, they're five or six years old and you're like, well, I don't want to, I don't know if I'm going to like this running, so I'm not going to spend the money. That's, that's asking for it. So did you, did you, did you buy a pair of shoes or did you just have like some running shoes already? You know, I would run from time to time, like on the treadmill um, at the gym, just to get in some cardio. So I had a pair of shoes that I had had for maybe like a year, but I only touched them if I knew I was gonna run. Otherwise I didn't wanna put any miles on them or get them um, dirty because they were expensive. Yeah. So I already had those. So I wore those when I was running for the first yeah. However many months and they were fine. I mean, they yeah. were, yeah. they were not used and they weren't that old. Right. Um, but yeah, eventually I switched because someone told me that they were too cushy for running. <laughs> so I switched out, but, um, yeah, it can, it can make a really big difference. I mean, it, it can go from feeling like, you know, your joints are just jamming together every time you're running to feeling like, oh wow, this is way better. I should have probably gotten these earlier. Right, right. Um, yeah, so as far as like if you go to buy a pair of shoes, I recommend going to a store that sells specifically running shoe, like a running shoe store. Just don't go to, um, I mean, unless you do your research ahead of time. I mean, don't, don't just go to like a sporting goods store in general and just pick a pair of shoes but that may be all that you have in your town so that's okay and then you know if you if you are trying to figure out because there's a thousand different shoes it's like how do i decide um the advice i give to people just try a bunch and whichever ones feel good those are the ones you get try not to look at them from a brand or color perspective although you want to like them i mean that's important right you got to look good but um just yeah, don't worry whether it's a neutral shoe or a stability shoe or anything like that. Um, just how it feels is actually a pretty good way of figuring out if it's a good shoe. So, yeah, and even if you go to even if you go to a running shoe store, like hopefully they'll let you do that. Just be like, I want to try a couple different brands, couple different kind, and just run in them and see what they feel, and get the ones that feel the best. That's a good place to start. Um, now, as far as um, 
where to start running. Um, most people, obviously, for convenience, just run, you know, outside their front door, right? If you live in a neighborhood, then it's like, oh, I'll run down the street. Um, if you live near a park, you run there. Um, so the, there's a bunch of different places that you can run. And obviously, to get started, just go to the place that's most convenient. But we have found that, and some research shows, that probably the place to get started for some people is to do some trail running. Um, because you tend to have less injuries with trail running outside of falling, uh, meaning that your footsteps are never quite the same because you're kind of having to go over some, you know, around some little rocks or some twigs and stuff like that. Um, so trail running is really nice, like if you, live in a, if you live in an area where they have some trails, and ideally it would be flat. So this is where these two things, these, this, this bit of advice kind of is hard to do, one versus the other, meaning like most trails involve some hills. But ideally, when you start running, make sure it's flat. Now, for a commentary on hills, Nadine, how do you feel about hills? I think people don't talk about hills enough. People need to be complaining more about <laughs> how horrible it is to run uphill. So, you know, people go out and they go for a run and they're like, oh, it was hot or this and that. It's like, no, if there was multiple hills in a run, it's 10 times harder than running on flat ground. So I struggle majorly with the hills yeah. myself. Yeah. It's, hills are hard. They're hard to go up. And I mean, sometimes you just want to walk them and that's okay. So ideally, a flat trail that's not paved would be a perfect place to start because there's less wear and tear on your body, but make sure it's convenient first of all, and then um, try to keep it flat. Even if you run on the road or sidewalk, keep it flat. A lot of people um, will get injured uh, running up a hill sometimes. It's not always, but it can, it can cause problems. Um, so yeah, so those are just kind of the tips off the top of my head of where you should, what some of the things you should be thinking about when you get started running. Um, next, we're gonna do a video on what are some, what I would call baseline mobility and strength, right? If there was just a couple things where you're like, man, I don't feel like my body's ready to even start adding in a little bit running. I walk, but running, that's a whole other thing. And it is definitely a whole other thing. You know, what are a couple things I should look at? And then what can I do about them to at least prepare my body just a little bit? And there's a lot of things, right? Like ideally it's like, we would love it if someone came in and said, hey, and three months I'm gonna start running, we'd be like, woohoo, now we can do all this stuff leading up to it. And we do do that with some people, or at least they, if they're starting to train for a race. Uh, but we'll go over a couple things, um, just baseline that you wanna get started with to, that will hopefully help you avoid injury and so that you can be successful for running. So look forward to that video. Thanks for watching, we'll talk to you soon, bye.